cancel culture. The notion of cancel culture, of canceling, of a group of people purporting to be doing, to be on the side of the good, telling other people what they can watch, listen to, or see, is absurd. It's ridiculous. That's, that's not a free society. Um, I think what people need to do, how to fight cancel culture, is to just say no. Simply say no. I know there was uh, the head of Simon & Schuster in uh, New York is a guy named Jonathan Karp. Uh, he's about my age. We grew up in the industry together, me as a writer, him as an editor. And he was interested in signing up Mike Pence for his memoir. Uh, Jonathan Karp is liberal and gay. And he said, I want this book. I want to hear what Mike Pence has to say. And I'd like to publish it. I think it will also make us a lot of money. I'm doing it as a business. And I'm doing it as I think I want, I want to know how he's, he's going to defend himself. And I'd like to work with him on how he's going to talk about stuff that I don't agree with. There are about 350 people who, at Simon Schuster who threatened to leave. Most of them assistants and aides who, of course, uh, hated Mike Pence. Jonathan Karp said, leave. We can get your jobs. I am not bowing down to this. I'm the head of this company, and I'm going to make this decision, and we're publishing the book. Go out and get another job somewhere. Believe me, we can... We can fill your job. The controversy went away in a day. It was over. Didn't last longer than that. I think if more people did that, then perhaps we would begin to see a collapse of the intensity of cancel culture. Uh, I know. Look, I look. There have been there there have been instances in the U.S. where people have complained about painting in a museum that that painting shouldn't be in that gallery or something. Usually rational minds come to some sense of agreement. Um, and, you know, of course, social media makes it all the more dramatic and crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Look, all I can say is that uh, I'm not, I don't understand it. I think it's about power. I don't think... I'm not quite sure if the people really even care. I think it's kind of about virtue signaling, showing you how sensitive you are, and uh, rather than really grappling with the problems inherent in the painting or in the song or in the film or in the book. That's a discussion. That's a conversation people should have. People shouldn't be canceling each other. They should be having a conversation with each other. And if people want to look at a piece of art, let them. If people want to read a book, let them. You know, and, and mostly, mostly they do. Um, but we did go through a moment, and it, and it happened in the early 90s when political correctness kind of took a hold, and American Psycho was certainly part of that. Um, that went away. And we're, but we've entered into something like I've never seen in my lifetime in the past seven, eight years, outrage over art and canceling people for what they've said and for jokes and for tweets. I don't know where this is all leading, the cancel culture, the trigger warnings, the safe spaces the banning of certain art, a kind of censorship that's going on right now, most dangerously with rewriting books and recutting films. Uh, recently, the Criterion Channel decided to edit four lines of dialogue from William Friedkin's The French Connection, which won the Best Picture Oscar in 1971. And it's our lead, a racist cop named Popeye Doyle, who uses the N-word a number of times in a number of sentences. Within the context of the movie, it makes perfect sense. For the time it takes place in and for who this person, based on a real person, was. That worries me. It, all, it also seems so hypocritical because I listen to so much hip hop and rap that has that word in it constantly, whether it's Doja Cat or whoever it is. I mean, it's, it's ubiquitous on rap 
you know, rap, CD, rap music and, and, and hip hop. Um, so it's all about context and how you use, for example, that word. But I think the hysteria over that word has become a hypocritical thing and has been used as a power play. And I don't think people really care. I don't think they care. I think they care if it is used in one particular way. But in terms of expression and music or in case of a, of a, of a person like Popeye Doyle in a film, uh, it's acceptable. It's fine. And I think everyone knows it. I just don't, I think everyone is so literal minded now. That's part of the problem. They can't see something as something else. Metaphor, metaphor seems to be missing in society. And um, there are so many other things to get angry about. Um, but we live in a very, in a very oversensitive time where people feel they're being judged and everyone is a victim of something. And so everyone is just very touchy about stuff. And so there's a lot of overreach. There's a lot of overreach. Where this will all end up, I don't know. I am not a prophet. I don't pretend to be a role model for anybody. So I don't know how worried or I am. I'm worried about, uh, you know, a lot of other things in my real life. And I also feel somewhat uncomfortable uh, being someone asked these questions as if I knew the answers. You know, I, I, I don't really feel like a pundit for, um, you know, um, for all of the ills that are going on in the creative spaces now.